All right, guys, continuing on with our theory transformers test review. Uh, we've got what, questions 46 through 51 that are based off of this diagram. And I would say this is probably the hardest question on this review. Um, so this one, we have a three-phase, four-wire panel. Uh, we have 2, 8, 120, meaning we have 2, 8 between our line conductors, 120 between any line conductor and neutral. And one of the questions there being 47 is asking you, are the three kilowatt heaters connected in a delta or a Y? So let's take a look at these loads. Let's take a look first at the lighting loads down here, and then we'll take a look at these heaters up above. So let's see, we've got these lighting loads and it looks like each lighting load is pick, picked up off of a separate bus here, right? So here we have, if I label these guys, uh, here, let me just get a different color here. If I label these guys A, B, and C, then this one's picked off of A, this is picked up off of B, and then this is fed off of the C bus. And it looks like they have a shared neutral right here going back to the neutral bus. Again, we can share three phase neutrals uh, if we have line A, line B, and line C because neither of these guys are happening at the same time. So those lighting loads there, those guys are connected up as a Y. Where we have one fed from line one, one fed from line two, and one fed from line three with a shared comma neutral in this center point right here. Okay, looking at these heaters though, let's see whether these guys are delta or a Y. Well, obviously there's no connection whatsoever to the neutral bus for any of these guys, but it's weird, these guys are single phase loads, right? They are double pole breakers off of two of the bus here. And let's just walk through where each, where, where each one of these guys is hooked up. So this line right here is connected into the A bus, or line one. This guy is connected up to B. This one over here is connected up to the C phase. Then we're connected up to A over here. And then finally, this one picks up B. And finally, this picks up C. So let's take a look. There's no common star point here that's referencing the neutral, so it's not a Y, but it doesn't exactly look like a delta. But remember the rule for the delta was A to B, B to C, and then C back to A. So here we can see A to B, B to C, and then C back to A. So you may not have thought of it before, but if you were hooking up single phase loads uh, off of a double pole breaker on a three phase panel, oftentimes you're creating a delta in that your phase currents will be lower and your line current on the bus will be higher because of the way that you've cooked up those single phase loads. Excellent, okay, so now we can answer uh, 47, right? So let's scroll down to 47 here. So are the heaters connected up in a delta or a Y? We've just shown that those guys are connected up as a delta. Okay, next thing we need to do is calculate the line current drawn by each of those three kilowatt heaters. All right, so let's do a quick little diagram here of our heaters. So we've got one that requires three kilowatts. Then down here, we've got three kilowatt load on this phase. And then we've got a three kilowatt load on our third phase here of our delta configuration. Okay. So those guys are all connected up as a delta, and we've got what voltage? We've got 2.8 across those guys. So here and here. Not the cleanest diagram, sorry about that. But we have 2.8 volts on the line, and we know that for the delta we also have 208 volts on the phase. So we're looking for the line current that's being drawn there. Uh, but let's find, remember we're gonna take each of these three phase circuits and we're breaking them down to a single phase equation here. So for single phase we have, let's pick up another color here. Uh, for single phase we have our VA for each of the phases is equal to our V phase times our I phase. So. We can find our I phase by taking our VA and dividing it by our V phase. 
Okay, so our phase current there is going to be equal to our VA. In this case, it's just kilowatts divided by our phase voltage. In this case, our VA is what? 3,000 watts. We're doing a single phase equation. So we've got 3,000 watts divided by 208 volts. Okay, and that gives us, 3,000 divided by 208 gives us 14.42 amps. So we're close, we've now found our phase current. So the current on the inside here is 14.42. And now we can find our line current. So for the delta, we're gonna take that 14.42 amps that we had on the phase, and we're gonna multiply that by root three. And that gives us a line current of 24.98 amps. Okay, so if we go back up to our diagram, we can use that 24.98 amps and we can place it uh, right here. So here we've got a line current of 24.98 amps on each of those heaters. Okay, next question, guys. Calculate the line current drawn by each of the 1200 watt lighting loads. Okay, so let's do the same thing. Let's do a quick little diagram here of our lighting loads. So we have uh, 1200 watts for our first load. Then we've got our second one at 1200 watts. Connect it up as a Y. And then again, we have 1200 watts on our C phase. And for these guys, we've got, uh, again, a line voltage of 208 volts. So let's draw that in there. So across this guy, we've got 208 volts as our line voltage. And now that we can see that these guys are connected up as a Y, then we know that the voltage on the phase is 120 volts on the phase. So each of those 1200 watt heaters uh, is being fed by 120 volts because of the connection that we have as the Y. 28 volts as the line, 120 volts as the phase. So now we've got to find our line current. Well, let's find our phase current. And by doing so, we will find our line current because they are identical. So we know that in a Y, our I line is equal to our I phase. And our I phase here is again going to be equal to our power value of 1200 watts divided by our voltage at 120 volts. And that gives us 10 amps. So, and we now know that our phase current and our line current are identical. So our line current is 10 amps. Okay, we can also answer this guy right here. Are the three 1200 kilowatt lighting load, 1200 watt lighting loads connected up as a delta or a Y? We know that those guys are connected up as a Y. And now we can take that 10 amps and we can bring it up to our previous diagram up here. And we can see that our current on the line now is 10 amps. Sorry guys, having a bit of an issue here. There we go. So this current right here for our lighting loads, our line current is 10 amps. Okay, so these guys are purely resistive loads. I've got a heater here, which is a resistive load. I've got incandescent light bulbs here that are lighting, that are a resistive load. And so our total current on each of these bus, because the next question asks is for the total current on each of the bus bars. Well, now we have our line current of 24.98 amps. In phase with that, we have a line current of 10 amps. So our total current is gonna be 34.98 amps. Okay, so let's take a look. We'll just slowly go through that up here, right? So total line current on each of the three phase uh, bus bars. Well, at that point we have our 24.98 amps plus our 10 amps 
And this one was our delta line current. Here, this was our Y line current. Each of those guys are in phase because they are resistive loads. So our total current is going to be 34.98 amps. Okay, expected current flow on the neutral bus of the panel. Well, let's just scroll up one more time and take a look at that diagram again. So for this guy, we have the heaters that are connected up as a delta. We know that the delta has no connection whatsoever to the neutral. And then that again, the neutral is carrying the unbalanced load. And here we have 1200, 1200, and 1200. So on this guy, we have absolutely no current flowing on, like theoretically. We know there's a small amount of current based on small variations in this guy. But essentially on the neutral, we've got nothing flowing on the neutral. Whereas on each of these guys on our bus, we found that the total current was 34.98 amps on each of those bus. Excellent. I'd say that's probably the hardest question, guys. Taking something like this, seeing whether it's a Y or a delta, and then finding your values all the way through. Okay, last question here was uh, the expected current flow on the neutral bus. So we'll just throw that in there for question 50. And we said that it was, was a balanced load. And then so we have essentially no current on the neutral. All right, guys, we're rocking. We're at 51. We're getting close. Uh, in an effort to try and save some time here, um, I'm going to bring up the answers for 52 through 55. Um, already written on the page so we can get through this a little bit faster. Give me two seconds and I'll bring those up. All right, so next question for 52 is asking what characteristics of, a, of each transformer must be the same when connecting two transformers in parallel? So we've put them in parallel so that we can have the same voltage out but we can have additional current from the other transformer. If we're going to do that then they have to be the same KVA rating. It would be better if they're the same KVA rating. They definitely have to have the same impedance so that each is going to allow for the same amount of current flow. You're not going to have one drawing more current than the other. We obviously want to have the same turns ratio, meaning the same voltage ratio output. And the secondary windings have got to have the same polarity. right? Otherwise, if those two polarities are opposite, then they're going to cancel each other out. Number 53, what's the combined total VA rating of two 250 VA transformers connected in parallel? So we need additional VA output. The one transformer is not doing it for us. We cannot purchase a 50 VA, 500 VA transformer. It's not available. So we're going to parallel two 250s together. And it's just P1 plus P2 equals total power. So 250 VA from the first transformer plus 250 VA from the second transformer. These are single phase transformers. So we're going to provide 500 VA to, in total. Okay, 54, uh, what are the three causes for power loss in a transformer? Well, just think of when you walk into the main electrical room. Oftentimes you're hit by a wave of heat, depending on the size of the transformer. So, and if you touch the transformer, it's usually warm to the touch. If you put your coffee on there and your coffee is hotter than when you left it, when you come back a half hour later, there's issues with the transformer, but there's always heat losses and they call that I squared R losses. Remember that power, in the form of heat was I squared R from basic. So they often coin the term I squared R for your heat losses, and that's just current flowing through the actual windings of the transformer. There are sound losses. There's that laminations that's buzzing, right? So we were losing uh, energy in the form of sound. And then we have magnetic field losses. They're usually 97 to 99% efficient, but we have small losses there in, in the magnetic field and that the primary does not transfer all of its energy to the secondary. And that's why we have to ground everything on the transformer because those magnetic fields are cutting across our steel core, our steel um, outer housing. So we have to bond all those guys because the, the induced voltages are happening from those stray magnetic fields. All right, guys, moving along at a blistering pace. This guy just needs to say the answer and just move on. 
55. What are the three ratio equations that describe voltage numbers of turns and current relationship for the primary and secondary windings of a single phase transformer? Uh, so these are for the single phase transformer. They're also for the phase windings of a three phase transformer. And the ratio is that your V primary is directly proportional to your number of turns on the primary and your voltage on the secondary is directly proportional to the number of turns on the secondary. And then in order to keep the VA the same, then the current has to be the inverse relationship so that uh, your V primary and your I secondary are on the numerator. And then you have your denominator is your V secondary and your I primary, right? Because we have voltage times current on the primary is equal to voltage times current on the secondary. So if we are stepping down, then the current's got to go up. So these guys have to be the inverse. All right, let's move on to 56. 56, describe the voltage and current relationships for phase and line values of both the Y and a delta circuit. So I have beat this into you a number of times. Uh, we've covered this in the first test, but just to try it one more time, uh, we have the Y I line is equal to I phase, and then your line voltage is equal to your V phase times root three. And for the delta, the delta is more of a parallel circuit. Voltages are the same on the line and the phase, and the current on the line is greater than the phase current by a factor of root three. Uh, 57, why do we require a voltage reading of zero volts between the two open connections of a delta configuration prior to closing the delta? So when we get a transformer, it's already going to be set up. It's most likely going to be a delta to Y transformer. Uh, but if you were to create a delta configuration out of three single phase transformers, uh, prior to closing that delta, let me just make this a little touch bigger. Uh, prior to closing that delta, we're going to have to take a voltage reading to make sure that it's not going to blow up in our phase. So I have two diagrams here. And the first diagram is of the delta with the appropriate magnetic polarity. So we did the buck boost test on our delta prior to connecting everything in. Um, and we do our last test here before closing the delta. And I've said, ultimately, you're going to put those two conductors under the same lug. So if you're going to put two wires under the same lug, you want to make sure that they basically have zero volts between them. This is a, a floating voltage here. It has no reference to ground. So this may be between zero to 30 volts. And essentially, we're seeing that if we do the vector sum of these guys, that from where we started to where we ended up, we're at the exact same spot right there. Now, if you screw up and you have the magnetic fields going in the opposite directions, you can see you have x1, x2, x1, x2, but then this magnetic field is reversed. Then you can see that instead of the vector sum being back to where we started, then this is where we started, and then all of a sudden the C phase is going in the opposite direction. And what happens is that between these two open connections here and here on your voltmeter, you're going to see double the phase voltage. Well, that's a disgusting voltage if you're working on 600 volts. Like if we're working on 600, then we know that our phase and our line voltage are identical, right? So we've got 600 volts on the phase. And then this value right here, this is going to be a disgusting 1200 volts between those two open points. And then you're going to put them under the same terminal and short them out. So essentially what you've done is you've created a magnetic short here in between these two points. You have a disgusting voltage that's based on the magnetic fields that are not summing to zero. And you either get two voltages. If you've created the delta in the right configuration, you're going to get zero to about 30, 50 volts. Then if you've screwed up and you have one of the magnetic fields going in the opposite direction, you're going to have double the phase voltage. So if your phase voltage is 600 volts, you're going to have 12, roughly 1200 volts between those two open connections. Put those guys under the same lug, smoke and a pancake. All right, guys, so hopefully that covers the closing the delta, right? We don't usually close the, the delta. We're not taking single phase transformers and creating a three phase bank on a daily basis. We're given a three phase transformer with a common core already. But just keep in mind that when a three phase bank is created, they ultimately will take that voltage reading before they close it. And that double checks your magnetic fields. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on to uh, question 58 here. Okay, so question 58 is... Uh, there's a lot of work. So here we've got a resistive load. And here we have an inductive load. And they have been fed off of this diagram 
above for our transformer. Now, I didn't give you the fact that it was a delta or a y. So you first have to look at this transformer and see that it is connected up A to B, B to C, and C back to A there. So that's a delta, 13.8 on the primary. We have 600 volts on the secondary. Uh, and the secondary, regardless of the fact that we have three conductors here, um, it's actually a Y connection there. Okay, so uh, we have, essentially I should have put the, the other conductor in there, right? That's a little bit too dirty, giving you three conductors. But we know that it's a Y because all of our X2s are tied together at the same potential. So as soon as you see a resistive load and inductive load, you have two different animals in the circuit. So when we take a look at the values throughout, so here I've asked you to find the total primary line current uh, for that diagram. So you have to create your own chart here. And we have the primary, the secondary, our first load, and our second load. Okay, so here we have 13.8 on the primary for our line voltage, which is the delta. And we know that the phase voltage is also going to be 13.8. Then we've got 600 volts on the line for our secondary. Uh, it's connected up as Y, so our phase voltage is 347. And that'll hold true for the resistive load, because this is a Y with 600 volts coming in, 347 between line and neutral. And our inductive load is going to be the 600 volts between line to line, and the phase voltage is going to be identical. Okay, I've given you the impedance. The impedance was 25 ohms on the resistive load. So we have 347 divided by 25. And that gives us a phase current of 13.88 amps. Over on our inductive load, then we have 600 divided by the impedance of 50 ohms. And that gives us 12 amps. The Y is the identical current at 13.88. And the delta is root 3 higher. So 12 times root 3 gives us 20.78. Now, we can't just add these two values up because those two values do not happen at the same time. They're 90 degrees out of phase. So what we need to do is now do 13.88 squared plus 20.78 squared and take the square root to find our total line current on the secondary at 25. Because this is a Y, then the same current will be on the phase. And the ratio on the phase is the 13.8 to the 347. So the ratio is 39.77 to 1. We have a higher voltage, lower voltage, meaning that we have a higher current, lower current, and our current on the primary is going to be lower by a factor of the same ratio. So we'll take the 25 amps, we divide by the 39.77 that we got from our ratio, and that gives us a phase current of 0.63. Then we've got a delta for the primary, so our final thing that we need to do is take our 0.63, multiply it by root 3 to give us 1.09 amps on the primary. So this is our final answer right there. Going through our steps there, we took uh, our voltages and put them in. So that was our first step for our line voltages. Then we went through and found all of our phase voltages based on whether it was a Y or a delta. Okay, next thing we need to do was find our phase currents. After that, we found our line currents. Then we used Pythagoras to find our total line current. And we used the fact that it was a Y to find our phase current. Then we found our ratio here for step number six. We used that ratio to find our phase current on the primary. And finally, our eighth step there is to find our primary current of 1.09 amps. All right, guys, I rocked through that one, but we've done similar questions before, so I didn't take the time to slowly and methodically go through there. But you can stop and start the video and go back and follow my steps there. Okay, let's move on to question 58 now. Or did I miss one here? Nope, sorry, that was 58, 59 now. <clears throat> so... 59 is dirty as well. So we've got a 4,800 three, three phase, three wire primary voltage, uh, step down to 1228, three phase, four wire secondary service. So we know that that's a delta primary and a Y secondary. 
The transformer bank uh, used consists of three single phase transformers. Each transformer is rated at 15 kVA. And the load is a non-inductive heater unit, so just a resistive unit, consisting of three 1 ohm sections connected in Y to the three phase four wire secondary system. So as you guys always say, that's a lot of words. Ah, that's a lot of words. <clears throat> but we got to take those words and then create a diagram out of what's given to us. So we have a 4800 three wire primary voltage. So we have a delta. So we can see here that I've created my delta A to B, B to C, C back to A. Line voltage is 4800. And we know that the phase voltage is 4800 as well. Okay, then our secondary, it says that uh, we have a three three phase four wire 122 weight so there we're creating a y <clears throat> excuse me uh, we have 120 on the phase so again this is our phase voltage and then from any line to line we have 28 volts as our line voltage okay then it says that it's feeding a non-inductive heating unit consisting of three one ohm sections in a y okay so the Y secondary is now feeding a Y load, and each of these resistors are simply just one ohm each. Okay, this one's really hard. You gotta do your diagram, and then you gotta do your chart to find all your values. Ultimately, what am I asking for? I'm asking for the KVA capacity of the transformer bank, KVA load on the transformer bank, and secondary line current and primary line current. Okay, so let's take a look at everything here. Okay, so, uh, We've got our diagram there, and then we're just doing a quick little chart. Primary, secondary, and our single load. Putting our voltages in for our line values, 4800, 28, 1, and 28. Because these are both Ys, the <clears throat> phase voltage is root 3 less at 120. And this is a delta, so it's identical at 4800. Then we're taking our 28, no, sorry, we're taking our 120 here, right? for our voltage on the phase, dividing by one ohm to give us 120 amps on the phase. And we know that the same current is on the line, right? So right here, we've got 120 volts over one ohm, and that's giving us 120 amps. And we know that there's 120 amps on the inside of the Y and 120 amps on the outside of the line. Yep. So we know that this current is our line current. It's being fed from this secondary. So there's 120 amps on this line here. And because it's a Y, we have the same value on the phase. The ratio here is on the phase. So 4,800 divided by 120 gives us a 40 to one ratio. And so here, if we have a higher voltage and a lower voltage, that means that we're going to have a higher current and a lower current. Where's the, sorry. Don't get, where's the phase current? Uh, this is going to be a higher current, and obviously this is going to be a lower current by a factor of 40. So we'll take the 120 divided by 40, gives us 3 amps. And then our final step is that we need to root 3 the 3 amps to give us 5.2. Again, we're taking the values from here and bringing them up here so we know what we're talking about. And so we found our primary line current at 5.2 amps. We found our secondary line current at a disgusting 120 amps. We found the KVA load on the transformer bank by taking our 28 on the line times our 120 amps on the line times root 3 to give us 42,223 volt amps. And then the KVA capacity of the transformer bank. So <clears throat> this load right here is requiring 42.23 KVA. But the total capacity of the transformer bank is given where? Let's see. Uh, transformer bank use, consists of three single phase transformers. Each transformer is rated at 15 kVA. So we have our 15 kVA times the three transformers for a total of 45 kVA. So their load requires 42 kVA and the transformer is rated to provide 45 kVA. Okay, let's take a look at question 60, guys. Actually, let me just zoom out here so you can just stop for two seconds, check all your values here before moving on. 
Okay, let's take a look at uh, question 60. Now, there's guaranteed also going to be some questions on open deltas and on auto transformers. So here's our questions on uh, the open deltas. So we need to memorize two values here. Um, and again, you can use 58% and 87%. I think those were the values that I rounded there. So compared to the full KVA of all three transformers in a closed delta, what's the maximum KVA that you get when you're in an open delta? So when you have a closed delta, and all of a sudden you lose one of the windings, then two of them are remaining. So compared to what you had for all three, you only get 57.8% of the KVA that you had on all three. If you have a closed delta and one of them opens, easy now, then if you're comparing it with the remaining two, you don't get 100% of the remaining two KVA. You get 86.7% of the remaining two KVA. Okay, so we've got to memorize these two values right here. Then lower down here on 62, I'm going to ask you that if you have three 150 kVA transformers, so similar to the ones that we just saw with 15 kVA, then you're going to add those guys together. 150 plus 150 gives us 300, and then we're going to uh, have another 150 to give us 450 kVA. Or if you want, just multiply the 150 but times 3. Alright guys, last thing we'll do for this video before we take a break is we'll take on 63 here. So if one of those transformers in the closed delta was to fail open, what would be the combined KVA of the two remaining transformers? So we had the three KVAs, right? And that was giving us the 450 KVA because we had 150 plus 150 plus 150 to give us 450 for the closed delta. If one of the transformers opens, then we can use either this multiplier, right? So we can do 0.578 or 57.8% of our total KVA. And that gives us 260.1 KVA. Or we can do 86.7% of the remaining two. So you would think that you would get the full 300 KVA, but you don't. You only get 86.7% of that value. But either calculation will give you the exact same value at 260 KVA. So we go from a closed delta at 450, one of the windings on the, tr on the transformer opens, we end up in an open delta, we still get three phase voltage, but the current has lost the root three relationship, and so we get 260 kVA on an open delta. All right guys, we'll stop there, uh, check on the next uh, video on the playlist, and we'll keep going with question 64.